Day 6. Therefore, all outer form was an expression of the inner consciousness. Life and consciousness, I realized, were one and the same thing. It was impossible to say, this life and that is consciousness. Consciousness was life and life was consciousness and was the creative power of both. Divine universal mind beyond, within and behind the universe. I realized that people placed highest importance on individuality and form. They could not imagine mind or intelligence operating in any effective way other than through the medium of individual form. Because of this, the Jews had created a mental image of a vast supreme being having all the attributes, positive and negative, of a human being. Thus was it possible for prophets to believe in and speak of Jehovah's anger, threats of punishment, visitations of sickness and plagues in response to human waywardness. But these mental images I realized were myths. They did not exist. I perceived that in any dimension of existence, it was the mind, the intelligence exhibited, which was the all-important factor relating to creation and man himself. Therefore, Genesis should be rewritten before creation was universal mind, creative power behind and within creation itself. Having seen so clearly, beyond all dispute, that the creative power of universal mind was everywhere within the infinity of the skies and active within earthly forms as well, I was inwardly directed to look around me and saw only gravel and rock. Then, suddenly I was presented with a picture of a beautiful land in which were growing every conceivable plant, shrub, and tree even birds flitted in the trees and animals grazed the grass. Watching this vision with amazement, I saw that plants and trees, every one of them, and yes, even birds and animals, in reality, were composed of hundreds of communities of infinitely tiny entities, your modern scientists call themselves, working continuously in an entirely harmonious spirit of cooperation to produce the substance and various organs of the inner system and the outer appearance of the completed living entity. I contemplated this wonderful activity for a long time, although time was no longer of any importance to me. As I gazed and gazed, I thought, who would have guessed that within the outer covering of fur, feather, skin, there was such intense activity within tiny communities of entities working together to give life, form, nutrition, healing, protection, endurance to the bodies of so many different species. It was, intelli it was the intelligently performed work which attracted my attention. Therefore, work, I realized, was an integral part of the creative power activity from the very least entity, cell, within living systems to the most advanced entity in the universe, man himself. In the systems of all living things, all the labor was under the direction, ultimately, of the divine creative power in whom were the plans and designs of creation. I saw that these plans and designs were, in reality, consciousness forms and could be termed words since each word signifies a very special consciousness form. Number 11. The Word. Hence, the original word in creative power consciousness becomes manifested in the visible world. The Word, and therefore the consciousness pattern, remains within the creative within the divine creative mind continually bringing forth its own. I could see then that everything in the universe did live, move, 
and have its being in the creative power of universal mind which was infinite and eternal and was the only true reality behind all manifestations of individualized form. I was filled with praise that everything in the world was out of and yet within this superlative creative power of divine mind. I marveled at all this secret activity forever taking place in all living things, including human bodies, and wondered how it was that such infinitely small units worked intelligently according to specified plans to produce unerringly the proposed form. Tree trunk, leaf, flower, fruit, insects, birds, animals, and human bodies. I then realized even more clearly that the creative power was the very source of all intelligent activity in the universe. If mankind possessed intelligence, it was only because it had drawn it from the universal source of all being. Furthermore, I was shown that the divine creative power always worked according to certain fundamental and exact principles of construction. I was shown that just as men have clear characteristics and a well-defined nature in their self-presentation to the world at large, so did the creative power possess a clearly defined nature, distinct characteristics, which could be clearly recognized in the manner that all living things, plants, animals, birds, men, were constructed and maintained. I saw that these principles and characteristics, clearly observable in the process of creation, were set in variable laws governing all of existence. Number 12. Laws, Principles of Creation These laws are so much part of life that they are never questioned. They are undeviating and consistent. But there would be no such laws if there were no creative intelligent power manifesting itself through the universe. These principles of creation, the characteristics of the creative power itself, are as follows. I am translating them into your present tense because these principles are eternal. Number one, the nature of the creative power is growth. Everything living always grows. Growth is a universal characteristic, an undeviating principle of existence. Number two, the nature of the creative power is nutrition and nourishment. Nutrition and nourishment are a normal and marvelously organized process within bodies which is evident to all who take the trouble to consider them. Nutrition is provided for all living things according to individual preferences and the food is digested to promote health and well-being. When little creatures are born, milk is already supplied within the mother, ready and waiting for the newborn. This too is a mystifying principle of existence none can deny. No science can explain why such a fortuitous, fortuitous function within the system, ensuring survival of the species, should have originally come into being. The actual function itself may be understood, but not the why and the mainspring of the function. Number three, the nature of the creative power is healing. Healing is a natural characteristic of existence and can be said to be a natural perfecting process which takes place to ensure individual comfort, but none can explain what prompts the activity of healing. Number four, the nature of the creative power is protection. Protection is an integral characteristic of creative power and all of its seeming miraculous activity in the world is geared towards protection. Today, your medical textbooks describe the various protective systems in your body, but when I was in the desert, I saw the characteristic of protection inherent in the intelligent creative power in the following way. As plants, birds, and animals were presented to me for inspired observation, I could see how every need of protection in bodies has been lovingly supplied, 
with the greatest attention to detail. Number five, this characteristic of protection is combined with the other dynamic characteristic of fulfillment of need. This was made clearly apparent in the provision of hair, fur, and feathers to protect the skin of living creatures and to provide warmth in the cold and shelter in the heat. I saw the tender endings of important and sensitive fingers and toes were all provided with appropriate protection of hoof and nail. Eyebrows protected eyes from sweat, eyelids, and lashes protected eyes from dust and damage. I realized that those animals which attracted flies were equipped with a kind of tails which would most speedily, speedily get rid of them. What a happy, joyous kind of love and caring were expressed in these small physical attributes which seemed so small and inconsequential and yet had such a profound bearing on the comfort of all living things. These physical luxuries, added to the basic physical design, were clearly the product of an intelligence which intended creation to be comfortable and happy, free of the stress which would have been experienced by man and beast if these luxury items had not been given them. Even the natural functions were so intelligently and comfortably designed as to call forth thanksgiving. Everything tucked so neatly out of sight. How blessed, how fortunate was mankind to be born into a life so wonderfully provided for. Again my praises soared and I was lifted on an inner golden light of rapturous wonder. For I now saw that, in addition to freedom from stress, living creatures were also meant to express the exuberant loving nature of the creative power. For this reason, they were equipped with limbs, arms, hands, legs, and feet, fingers and toes, to enable them to move about, run, leap, and dance, to be able to express their inmost thoughts and feelings. I even felt that if mankind longed to fly and grow wings and believed with all their hearts they could do so, eventually they would begin growing something additional to enable them to fly. It was at this point of understanding of the nature of the creative power that I came into the full consciousness of the love directing the works of the universal, intelligent, creative power. As I pondered this love, I realized that the mother in creation nourishes, protects, fulfills the needs, and tries to promote healing of offspring. This is the activity of love. Number six, the innate characteristic of the loving, intelligent, creative power which has given creation its individual form and being is work. It works for us, in us, and through us. Its work is always, always, always prompted by love. This cosmic revelation filled me with joy and astonishment. What a wonderful we world we live in. It was the culminating point in my enlightenment and my overall view of the truth concerning the source of all being. I had already seen the reality of the physical bodies composed of various communities of identical, infinitely tiny entities, working in a spirit of cooperation and harmony to produce the various components of the body, flesh, bone, blood, two eyes, and hair. The only difference between these communities lay in the type of work demanded by their common goals. Surely, the divine impulse behind all this intelligent, purposeful activity in the body was both the inspiration and foundation of man's own conduct when people worked in unison to produce a planned objective. They drew intelligence and purpose from the creative power, yet how very different was man's behavior when engaged in earthly construction or any other communal project for it was inevitably characterized by arguments and dissension.